Welcome you all today for this wonderful session of seed dispersal. What is the seed dispersal all about? Why do seeds need to get dispersed? Imagine, as you all know, a plant bears so many seeds, ample of seeds. Think for a while. If all the seeds fall together at one place, imagine as if you have this plant bearing ample of seeds. And if all the seeds fall at one place, what will happen? Don't they fight for food? Won't they be struggling for water, for sunlight, for nutrients? And ultimately, I don't think all the seeds will grow well. All the seeds will grow into a healthy plant, right? So, we have come down to the conclusion that seeds need to get dispersed. What is dispersal all about? So, when we talk about seed dispersal, it is movement of the seed away from the parent plant, right? It's movement of the seed away from the parent plant. Now, seed dispersal is done by various ways. Depends on the seed, what kind of seed you have. If the seed is very lightweight, I'll just show you the seed of the tulsi plant. So this is seed of a tulsi plant which is very lightweight and it could be easily blown away with the wind. All the lightweight seeds blows away with the wind, they get dispersed with the help of the wind. Now, next comes dispersal by water. You could see this coconut. You can see the outer shell is made up of so many fibers and this coconut can easily float on the water. You won't believe, it's hard to believe that this coconut could float on water at a stretch for 1000 kilometers. And then when it reaches the shore, when it reaches the soil, when it gets the soil, it starts germinating. So this is dispersal by water. Coconut get dispersed by water. First I told you dispersal by wind, which is done by the, when the seed is very light, easily blown away with the wind. The second one is dispersal by water, which is, uh, for which I gave you the example of a coconut. Coconut floats on the water, as soon as it gets the soil, it starts germinating. Now comes dispersal by animals. I have seen many students, many children, they love to eat raw mango and after eating the raw mango, they eat the pulp and they throw the seed anywhere. So wherever you all throw the seed, it germinates at that place, right? In the same way, we human beings also keep throwing seeds, we eat the fruit, we throw the seed anywhere and then we help in seed dispersal. Now, few seeds have got hooks in them. These hooks get stuck in the animal's body, in the fur of the animal's body. They even get stuck in our body, in our clothes and wherever we grow, we drop those seeds, right? Not only that, some seeds have got some hard cover in that. Now, if these seeds fall directly in the, so on the soil, it might face some problem in germinating. So, at times what happens? Birds come, birds eat these seeds and these seeds travel, they go to the bird's stomach whereas various acids are there. Now these acids dissolve the outer shell of the seed, they make it, they softens the seed and when the seed travels through the gut of the bird, the outer cover becomes soft and then the bird throws it out of the body. The moment it falls on the ground, it starts germinating easily because the seed, uh, the cover of the seed is not that hard now. So, we all help in seed dispersal. When I talk about birds, when I talk about human beings, when I talk about animals, we all are biotic agents of seed dispersal. Now, when we talk, uh, when I spoke about wind, when I talked about water, these are the abiotic agents of seed dispersal. Let's come down to the, another kind of seed dispersal that is by explosion. You might have seen pea plant. Pea. Okay. So due to sun's heat, what exactly happens is this pod, this pea pod gets ruptured. It splits up into two parts. It splits up into two parts and 
then what exactly happens is the seed what is there inside the pod is falls with a great pressure it's thrown out with a great pressure and then it goes to a certain distance and then it falls on the soil and starts germinating so this is by explosion due to sun seed at times uh, this uh, pod splits up it curls up also okay and with a great pressure the seed is just thrown away from the pod the moment it reaches the soil it starts germinating this is by explosion so if we have learned this puzzle by explosion now we are going to uh, tell you one thing do you need only uh, when you have a seed then only you can grow a plant no it's not like that we can grow plant by its vegetative parts also when i talk about vegetative parts i mean to say we can grow a new plant but with the help of the root or with the help of the stem or with the help of the leaves and we can take any part of the plant we can cut a, any part of the plant could be a root stem or a leaf and we can grow n numbers of plants all right now in when we when we are talking about vegetative reproduction or asexual reproduction here just one plant from just one plant we can grow we do we need not have to take two plants two plants are not required with the help of just one plant we can grow as many plants as we want now i'll give you an example when we talk about stem cutting you look at this rose plant I have a rose plant for you. Now, what I'll be doing is, I'll just cut one stem of the rose plant. Uh, I'm to, we are talking about reproduction by stem. Okay. For example, I took rose plant for you. I'll just show you. I'll cut one stem of the rose plant. And now, I divided into two parts. I've, I took a stem of a rose plant. I have cut it into two parts. You could even cut into ten, fifteen, and number the way you want. Now, after cutting these two parts, I have taken a pot. I fill little soil into it, and after putting manure, I have made the pot ready. Now, this stem, when I took, I have to. We have to make a slanting cut in it. Okay, so the surface area is more. Then, while putting in the soil. You have to put like this. Put in the soil properly. Water it. Keep it in sunlight. You have to wait for ten to fifteen days for nearly two weeks, and you will find uh, each uh, twig will develop into a new plant. I have just cut it into two parts. Whereas you can cut into ten, fifteen, as many parts as you want, and you'll find each plant, each part growing into a new plant. So you need not have to go, uh, go to market and buy uh, these plants. You can just grow as many plants as you want, just by cutting a small stem of that particular plant. So this is all about. Uh, reproduction by stem cutting same way the reproduction uh, the by stem cutting is found in the potato as well over here you can see a uh, eye of the potato you could see this eye of the potato a half moon like structure so your potato has got so many eyes in it potato is the stem of a plant right so over here also the reproduction is done by stem cutting and same is done in the onion as well you if you put this onion in water several roots will arise from here and an onion also is the stem of a plant and then you will find the root and shoot growing out of it so this is all about reproduction by stem cutting now we we'll move on to reproduction through leaves for this i have taken a plant this is bryophyllum plant whereas you could see the leaves are thick and leathery and these leaves have got so many notches in it i'll just show you one of the leaf so i have plucked a leaf and you could see there are several notches nearly 10 to 15 notches are there in just in one leaf what i'll be doing now is i'll i'll take a pot i'll take a pot 
This is the pot what I have taken. I will fill water into it. I fill the pot with water. This biofilm leaf, which I took it from a biofilm plant, I will just put it in water. And now, uh, after 10 to 15 days, you have to wait for 2 weeks. After 2 weeks, you will find a root arising from each notch and the shoot as well. So from each note you will get one, you will get at least one tiny baby plant. If there are 16 notches, you are going to get 16 plants. So from one leaf, we will get 16 plants. This is reproduction by leaf. I have given you example of a bryophyllum leaf. So earlier we have done reproduction by stem and this is reproduction by leaf. Moving on to reproduction by root, you can take carrot and radish and you, you can put it in the soil, each carrot and radish is grow, going to grow into a new plant. So this is reproduction by root. Now, moving on, here I have today, today I have with you, I have for you two plants. One is a flowering plant, the another one is non-flowering plant. You can very well see the rose plant, it, it is having a flower. So what are flowering plants? Flowering plants are the plants that bear flower. Non-flowering plants are the plants that do not bear, bear flower. In this plant, this is fern, F-E-R-N, fern. Here you will not find flower throughout the year. This plant will never bear flowers. Now, the question arises, how reproduction takes place in this plant? How does it reproduce? So, if you look at the leaf carefully, I have one leaf for you, I will show you. Just look at this leaf, you will find black dots over here several black dots over here these are sore eyes and there are so many spores inside each sore eye okay you all can very well make out these spores these sore eyes so imagine the millions of so spores are there in the each leaf there are millions of spores in these in each leaf and as soon as these spores will fall on the ground it is going to grow into a new plant. These spores are going to grow into a new plant. Right? You could, you could now see this. Spores are clear. All the black dots you could see. So these all are the spores. Same way. When we talked about fern. In the same way, the reproduction is done in the bread mold. You might have seen fungus growing in your bread. Okay? I'll show you one of the fungus. Uh, if you will observe fungus carefully, what color is it? I'll just show. Uh, could you all see some white color thing growing over here? Shall I, shall, let us bring a little closer. Yes. Yes. Uh, let's focus a little more down. Yeah. So the, uh, what color is this fungus? It's completely white in color. Okay. Now, same thing grows on your bread you might have observed. Now, what's the structure of fungus? If you take just one strand of it and if you try to observe under a microscope, you will find this type of structure. It is something like, looks like a balloon. We have tied a balloon in a, with a thread, okay? And you, uh, this is known as sporangium, whereas there are several spores inside, several tiny black dots inside the sporangium. You call it spores. Once it is matured, it ruptures. What exactly happens once the wall ruptures, all these spores start falling down. Okay? This is your bread. This is your bread. And the spores, wherever they fall, and you will find a new structure growing over here. A new sporangium and hyphae growing. So you just imagine how quickly the fungus grows on the bread. Okay? The millions of spores, wherever they fall, they start growing into a new uh, fungus or new plant. Right? So this is all about bread mold. The same way mushrooms also grow. So this is reproduction by spores. Now, let's summarize what we have learned today. Uh, we talked about seed dispersal, whereas we talked about dispersal by wind which is found in the plant like Tikoma, cotton, dandelion. Then we talked about dispersal by water, which is done in coconut, lotus and even mangroves. Next, we came down to dispersal by animals. Uh, that is uh, found in the apple, tomato, fig and cherry as well. 
then dispersal by explosion that is found in P and B which uh, now uh, moving on to the production in the plants we also talked about it's not necessary to go to market and buy a seed whereas we can grow plants with the help of stem leaf and root so we talked about reproduction by stem where we gave uh, we talked about rose and uh, we talked about onion and potato as well next uh, we came down to reproduction by leaves we had uh, an example of the bryophyllum leaf which we can grow from one leaf we can grow 10 to 15 plants Next uh, is reproduction by root, by carrot, radish and all. Uh, the next uh, we talked about reproduction by spores. Whereas uh, we have seen the plant fern. Uh, it's a non-flowering plant and uh, it reproduces with the help of spores. Breadwood also reproduces with the help of spores. And same is the thing with mushroom. So this is all reproduction by various stem, leaves, roots and spores. It's not only that, if you see nowadays, uh, you might have heard about tissue, uh, tissue culture laboratories. What do they usually do there? They just take a small cell, a, a tiny cell of the plant from any part of the plant and they put it in a solution. They leave it for a few days in the nutrient medium and the single cell grows and it, uh, so many cells are formed over there which they call it as callus. And then they separate all these cells, they put it in separate uh, bottles you could say and they fill agar solution in it. Whereas each cell in the bottle develops a root and the shoot. All this process is done in a laboratory and they, they put a, uh, it is done in a very sterilized condition. They keep a HEPA filter which is known as high efficiency particulate filter. Whereas no germs could enter in that laboratory. And once all the, this tiny plant is ready with the root and shoot, they gradually transfer it in the pot and then on the ground in the harsh conditions. So with the help of this tissue culture laboratory, with just one single cell, we are producing millions and millions of plants. That's it. That's all about. Thank you.